Αγαπητοί τηλεθεατέ, καλησπέρα σα. Άλλη μια Παρασκευή, συνεπεί στο ραντεβού μα, θα σα παρουσιάσουμε και σήμερα τι εκδηλώσει που διαδραματίζονται στην ομογένεια τη Μεγάλη Βρετανία. Για του τηλεθεατέ μα από το Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο, να σα υπενθυμίσουμε ότι μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε το πρόγραμμά μα αλλά και τι υπόλοιπε παραγωγέ του Hellenic TV από το Rockbox, που μπορείτε να το προμηθευτείτε από τα γραφεία τη ΣΥΤΑ UK στο Southgate. Με αυτόν τον τρόπο μπορείτε να βλέπετε το Hellenic TV One και ολόκληρη την πλατφόρμα του που περιλαμβάνει 14 ελληνικά κανάλια από Ελλάδα και Κύπρο, νέες κινηματογραφικές παραγωγές, καθώς και να αποφεληθείτε από τις υπόλοιπες υπηρεσίες που προσφέρει η UK. Περισσότερες πληροφορίες σχετικά με τα προγράμματα του Hellenic TV μπορείτε να βρείτε στην ιστοσελίδα μας www.hellenictv.net ενώ για τον τρόπο με τον οποίο μπορείτε να παρακολουθείτε ολόκληρη την πλατφόρμα του Hellenic TV στις τηλεοράσεις σας στην ιστοσελίδα www.citauk.com Για την προβολή των εκδηλώσεών σας και της επιχείρησής σας επικοινωνήστε μαζί μας στο τηλέφωνο 020-8292-7037 ή στην ηλεκτρονική μας διεύθυνση info at hellenictv.net. Στην απόψινή μας εκπομπή θα σας παρουσιάσουμε την προεκλογική εκδήλωση που διοργάνωσε το ΑΚΕΛ Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου, αποσπάσματα από την διάλεξη του Ελεύθερου Πανεπιστημίου για την Ομογένεια του Λονδίνου με τον καθηγητή του Τμήματος Οικονομικών του Πανεπιστημίου Κύπρου, κ. Μιχαήλ Μιχαήλ, τις συνεντεύξεις που έδωσαν στο Hellenic TV οι υποψήφοι βουλευτές Βορείου Λονδίνου, κ. Πάμπος Χαραλάμπους και David Barrows, και αποσπάσματα από την διάλεξη που έδωσε στο Hellenic Center ο ειδικό τεχνολογίας της πληροφορικής, κ. Κωνσταντίνος Βάρσης, με θέμα ηλεκτρονική ταυτότητα. Το πρώτο μας θέμα παρουσιάζει την προεκλογική εκδήλωση του ΑΚΕΛ Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου, που διοργανώθηκε την περασμένη 5η-23 Απριλίου στο Κυπριακό Κοινοτικό Κέντρο στο Wood Green. Την εκδήλωση τίμησαν με την παρουσία τους υποψήφοι με το Εργατικό Κόμμα, μέλη του Εργατικού Κόμματος, μέλη του ΑΚΕΛ Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου, καθώς και πλήθος κόσμου που υποστηρίζει το Εργατικό Κόμμα. Εδώ να αναφέρουμε ότι ήταν παρόντες οι βουλευτές του εργατικού κόμματος Catherine West, η οποία είναι υποψήφια στο Wood Green και Horsney, ο υποψήφιος Πάμπος Χαραλάμπους για το Enfield και Southgate, η υποψήφια John Ryan για το Enfield North, η Kate Osamore για το Edmonton και Sarah Sackman για το Finsley και Golders Green. Επίση, στο παρόν έδωσαν ο βουλευτή Σερ Άλαν Μιλ, ο πρώην βουλευτή των εργατικών και φίλο τη Κύπρου Άντι Λαβ, ο γραμματέα του ΑΚΕΛ Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου κ. Πάμπο Χαραλάμπου και ο πρόεδρο τη Εθνική Κυπριακή Ομοσπονδία κ. Πίτερ Δρουσιώτη. Την εκδήλωση άνοιξε ο γραμματέα του ΑΚΕΛ, ο οποίο ήταν και συντονιστή τη εκδήλωση κ. Πάμπο Χαραλάμπου. Εμεί θα παρακολουθήσουμε τα αποσπάσματα από τι ομιλίε όλων όσων έλαβαν μέρο στην προεκλογική συγκέντρωση. First of all, I would like to welcome our... Good friend, Sir Alan Mill, that came all the way from Mansfield just to be there and to show their support, just to be here and to show their support to all the candidates of North London. Thank you very much, Alan. You are a true friend for us and for Cyprus. Thank you. We have the president of the Federation here, Peter Druschetis. We have the candidates. We have the candidates for Enfield North, John Ryan, for Southgate Enfield, Bambos Caralambos. Uh, Andrew Dismore, unfortunately, could not make it. He sent his apologies, but he wants help. And people that we have to try and give him the help that he needs. He needs uh, hands. So we have to see what we can do for Andrew Dismore. Uh, Kate Osama, I think she should be here. Catherine West, she's running a bit late. And Sarah Sackman, I think she's running a bit late. So we're going to start, and as when they come, they can have the floor and say a few words. Uh, I would like to welcome you all uh, to our election gathering in support of Labour candidates in our area. I would like to extend a special welcome to all the Labour candidates that are here, and uh, I wish them all the best. It is critical for the Cypriot community, which is overwhelming progressive, to make the voice heard in the upcoming elections by supporting Labour. By electing Labour local MPs who will protect our public service, protect the NHS, and implement policies that protect wages against greedy capitalism, and lift the working people from poverty and benefits. 
we as overseas Cypriots, we have the Cyprus problem on top of our agenda. At the time when there is a good possibility that negotiations about the Cyprus problem will restart, we would want the new Labour government to exert pressure on Turkey and to help finding a just and viable solution for all the Cypriots. We are not against Turkey joining the European Union, but we want Turkey to comply with human rights issues, with the resolution of the United Nations on Cyprus, and with international European law. We are also want Turkey to implement the Ankara Protocol and to consider us as an equal partner in European Union. We have with us Turkish Cypriots. We, han, we have Hassan Raif here. Well, thank you, Hassan Raif, for coming. Right, and uh, we are all together in this. The past five years have shown that despite David Cameron's promises and his attractive PR, the right remains as ruthless as during the Thatcher eras. The UK national debt rises just as fast as when the government came to, to the office. Yet they remain committed to their austerity policies that is hit the working class the hardest. But as we always knew, those policies are ideological, driven, and not based in facts. The shrinking of government pair with tax protection for the rich and the protection of the corporate profits through the erosion of working rights and wages is what the right believes, but not what Britain needs. David Cameron and his party has presided over an era in which the living standards of the working and middle classes eroded significantly. The young are locked out of the housing market, especially in North London and sky-high rents and bills and forcing them working in families into food poverty. Through successive cuts to the NHS and local services, they have caused the biggest A&E crisis in the NHS history. Through all this austerity and misery, they found the time, energy, and most importantly, funds to give tax cuts to their wealthy friends and benefactors. During this time, the Nick Clerk and the Liberal Democrats play Robin and to David Cameron's batsman. They did not just sit and watch the Conservatives rip apart the fabric of our state, they supported them as well. They voted for the cuts, they voted for the tuition fees hikes, and they voted for the privatization of the Royal Mail. Now they have taken to the airwaves to defend this government and their record, but we, which is indefens in, indefensible. They lost any pretense of, of a progressive party. They have, they have shown themselves to be the crust on which a limping conservative government depended to impose the hardest policies since the end of the, social, of the Second World War. Kumbaris, uh, I I feel it's a real honour to be asked to come uh, down from Mansfield uh, to speak on behalf of the local candidates who will be running in the North London area, some of whom are deep friends, and I, I can't see his bambos here. <laughs> I'm really pleased that you're here because I, I want to actually say that it really is about time we start to elect Cypriots into our parliament, and this election you're the best chance we've got, and the sooner we do it and get others in, the better, because for far too long we've been defunct of a major part of our community, <coughs> hundreds of thousands of people not represented in the Palace of Westminster. So best of luck, and please do whatever you can for him and for Joan and all the other candidates in the North London area. And I'm going to just go into w why, but first of all, I have a few thanks to, to pay to the Federation, the President of the Assembly, uh, of the Federation and also the, the centre here to Akel, all the other people who are actually participate in from both sides of the community. It's very, very important that we keep that together. There's going to be an election result very, very soon, not just in England, but in Cyprus, uh, in parts of Cyprus that uh, are going to go throw considerable light on the way forward in future years. And we can only hope that uh, the work is being done there as well as in the UK to try and formulate agreements that will take us all forward. 
and begin the process of rebuilding Cyprus because it has to be rebuilt. And I'm going to tell you why it needs to be rebuilt. Because as Bambos has, uh, has just uh, mentioned, uh, we had a, a scenario where, whereby uh, Labour in government went through a tortuous time in government at the latter end of it and also since where it was accused of doing all kinds of financial mishandling of the economy. Let me remind you, there were mistakes made. Primarily, we eased upon the banking system and gave them far too much independence than they should have had. But the reality is, the crisis which occurred in the UK wasn't one which is caused by the Labour government. It was caused by international capital, and in particular bankers, particularly in the United States of America, through the advent of subprime mortgages, which then ran the length and breadth of not only America, but also in places like Japan and throughout Europe. And that caused the domino effect of the crisis, which brought us nearly all to our knees. If you want any proof of that, Gordon Brown didn't cause the blight in Spain, in Greece, in Portugal, in France, in Germany, in Sweden, the United States, in Tokyo, and all the rest of it. Even in China, it actually was capitalism that did that. Capitalism mishandled by itself. And what happened when Labour was removed from power at the last general election? Even more heist was given to the banking sector. It went on nonchalantly, giving itself bigger and bigger bonuses. Now, if there's any reason why we want financial management back into our system now than ever before, it's an end to that kind of practice. And a bit of realism brought in and stop blaming, stop blaming the system whereby somehow the years of labour were a letdown. I just want to remind people, Gordon Brown was a fine man and he was a good official of this country. He did some marvellous things. I just want to remind people, he took us through the most, the biggest endeavour in behalf of ordinary working class people there's ever been done. He's caused more redistribution of monies and wealth than had ever been done before, even by Lloyd George standards. He was way, way ahead of anybody. So I find you know, a lot of sour taste in my mouth when I hear all these people saying, we've got to apologise, we've got to do this, that, and that. We had a very good period of, of government, in government office, and we did fine, but a crisis beat us, and that's the reality. But what we've got to do is to learn from that and ensure it doesn't happen again. But in the interim, we've got to rebuild our services. And the way to do that isn't more and more and more austerity. Rather, it's a belief in our people and the services we provide. There's a bigger need now for, for public services than there's ever been in the last few years. Our health service is in a credible crisis. This morning I was at my local hospital, which has just been built at a cost of 585 million to build and equip that end of the hospital. Good evening, everybody. It's lovely to be back here in Earlham Grove. It's a little while since um, I was last here, but I've been to many events. Um, it's very pleasurable, pleasurable events, I might add, in this uh, very hall. You probably know, um, or you may not, that the 2011 census, um, Enfield is ranked number one for all local authorities in England and Wales for Greek and Greek Cypriots living um, in the borough. So we have a very large number of Greek and Greek Cypriot uh, residents in Enfield. We also have the largest number of Turkish and Turkish Cypriot residents for anywhere in the country. So in Enfield, we have really a little Cyprus. And in Enfield North, we have um, a, a, a facility called the Enfield Cypriot Association that is actually in um, my constituency, or what I hope will be my constituency again very soon. And the Enfield Cypriot Association, I see Fotis sat there at the back, is a fantastic um, organisation. And I always think of it as a model for where we want to be and where we want Cyprus to be. Because it is um, 
a, um, a gathering place, a community centre. It provides support and social care for the Cypriot community. And I mean for the Cypriot community, much as this place does, both Greek and Turkish Cypriots. You can go in there in an afternoon and find people from both communities playing backgammon together, from both communities eating together and laughing and talking and exchanging stories about their families, their children, their grandchildren, all together. They even had a choir that was from both communities that was actually very, very good. And they work closely with all local politicians and they make a point of making sure they know that this is the Greek and Turkish Cypriot communities working and living together side by side. And I think that is a model for what we want to see in Cyprus and proves the point that Greek and Turkish Cypriots can live and work and enjoy themselves together. So I'm very, very proud of the Enfield Cypriot Association. If I am elected, I intend to carry on working very closely with them so I want to say thank you to Fotis and his colleagues for the work they do there. Thank you very much, Fotis. <laughs> I will support the current UN brokered negotiations on achieving a comprehensive settlement in Cyprus based on a bicommunal, bizonal federation with a single international legal personality and single sovereignty led by both communities as set out in the relevant Security Council resolutions and the high-level agreements. I want to see a single, united Cyprus citizenship regulated by federal law. That's my position. I won't deviate from that unless both communities move in a different direction together and by agreement. And I will do everything I possibly can working with my colleagues and with my party and hopefully with my government to help us to achieve that. Thank you for all of your support. Um, I want to thank uh, Bambos and Agel and Barigagi for inviting me along here tonight. Um, I've, I've, there are many familiar faces in the audience. Um, so uh, and I'm proud to say that I'm, I'm, I'm part of the separate community, um, but there are lots of challenges that face us over the years ahead. And I'm going to tell you a bit about why we desperately need a Labour victory to help us in the future. Um, I, I grew up very near here, and I went to Greek school here at Earlham Grove, and also to schools in Enfield. And I know the needs of the community, and I know that the Tory-led coalition is failing us. Under this government, we've seen, as Jones mentioned, uh, longer waiting times to be seen by GPs, um, and longer waiting times at hospitals where they're missing their targets. We've seen savage cuts to local authority funding, which had a knock-on effect on the community. And people are worse off under the Tories by an average of £1,600 a year. We desperately need a Labour government to help bring about more investment in our health service, uh, to bring about decent pay and more support for all of us. And the Labour Party is the only party whose core values are about the community, about working together, cooperation, helping each other, the redistribution of wealth and equality and the Labour Party values are our community values. I've heard people from the community say to vote for me uh, only because I'm a Cypriot. Well, I reject that completely. Why? Because, incredible as it may sound, at the last council elections uh, in May 2014, in my ward where I'm a councillor in Palmer's Green, we had a Cypriot who was standing for the British National Party on a platform for keeping immigrants out of Britain when he's the son of immigrants. I mean, imagine that. So if you voted, for, if you voted purely on ethnic grounds, you'd have been voting for him. And you'd be voting for a fascist, a racist party. Ethnicity has never been the hallmark of a person's decency or character. The community's interests are not best served by voting for anyone who's Cypriot, but by voting for the best people able to, uh, able to serve the community. And I'm proud to say we have those people in this room and some people who aren't able to he be here. We have Joan, we have Kate, we have Sarah, um, we have Andrew Dismore in Finchley, uh, we also have Amy Trevelyan in Chipping Barnet, um, and also um, Catherine West in Hornsey and Wood Green, uh, and David Lammy in uh, Tottenham. There are many others, but those are the ones in the immediate sort of vicinity. Uh, and our interests are best served by voting for all those people. On the issue of Cyprus, uh, I know that Labour Party and the Labour movement are committed to finding a just solution for Cyprus. 
We need a Labour government to put pressure on Turkey to work harder to find a solution. We've been proudly served by Labour in the past and we should never forget the contribution made by Robin Cook and Pauline Green who actually helped get Cyprus to become a member of the European Union against much opposition. I'm proud to be a Cypriot and I look forward to serving the community as a Labour Member of Parliament for Enfield Southgate. But we must be clear that my colleagues and I can only win with your support. So please help us to help you by making sure that you vote Labour and that you tell your friends and family to vote Labour and that you come out and help all of us wherever you can. With your help, I know that we can win and we must win for the sake of our community. So please make sure you vote Labour and that you help uh, on May the 7th. It's very, very important. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the incredibly warm welcome. Not just tonight, but over the past year, I've received an incredibly warm welcome from the Greek community in Finchley and Golders Green. And I must say, having grown up in Finchley and Golders Green within the Jewish community there, it's been one of the great pleasures as a candidate to get to know your community in all its rich, cultural, vibrant uh, aspects. I've enjoyed visiting the local Greek schools, being taught Greek dance, learning a few words of Greek. In fact, I had a very funny uh, incident where I was out canvassing. I knocked on this gentleman's door and I was met with a barrage of very animated foreign words. I couldn't make head nor tail of it. About 30 seconds in, I realized that this very friendly gentleman was speaking to me in Greek. And I said, I'm terribly sorry, but I don't speak Greek. And he looked at me and he said, what do you mean you don't speak Greek? You look Greek. And I said, well, the thing is, I'm not actually Greek. And he said, that's no excuse. And he was absolutely right. Uh, but the, the warmth uh, that I have experienced has been extraordinary. And just a few weeks ago, I had my first experience of a Greek Orthodox Easter uh, marked in Barnet. And truly, it was a remarkable experience. As others have said, and I don't want to repeat, plainly the issues facing the Cypriot community are similar to those uh, facing our other communities too. So whether it's the issue of housing in London and how we achieve more affordable rent and more affordable housing, whether it's the issue of how we tackle the crisis of funding in our NHS, that affects Cypriot and non-Cypriot voters alike. And whether it's the issue of how we get an economy that works not just for a privileged few, but for the many, delivering a higher minimum wage, a living a wage, and banning exploitative zero hours contracts, that will benefit your community and the neighboring communities within which you live. The thing that I appreciated most about growing up in Finchley and Golders Green was its diversity, was its tolerance. It's that which makes me proud to call myself a Londoner, and it's those same values which make me proud to be a member of the Labour Party and standing in this election. And I want to say that going into this election, I've had remarkable support from right across the Greek Cypriot community, and indeed from the Turkish Cypriot community as well. And I hope that if I'm fortunate enough to be elected on May the 7th as the MP for Finchley and Golders Green, to get to know in the coming years your community even better. It's been wonderful getting to know you, and I really hope to work with you in the future. Thank you. I'd first like to say thank you to Bambos for inviting me here today. I thought that it'd be very important that I introduce myself to you all here because Harringay is where I grew up. Harringay is my home and it's a place that I'm very, very proud of. It's a place where I formed my politics. It's a place where I learnt well, how important it is for communities to live and stand and fight side by side. So as much as I am representing, I hope, <laughs> Edmonton on May the 7th, May the 8th, Edmonton is a place which I will use Haringey as a place which I bring together the politics of Haringey and the politics of Edmonton and ensure that the beauty, 
the, the, the togetherness, the family spirit that we have in Haringey, I bring across to Edmonton. There was a time when I remember Haringey was twinned with Larnaca. And that was during a period of time when my mum was the deputy leader of Haringey. So again, I'm letting you know that my politics is Haringey politics. I'm not going to go on about a lot of the things which were said before, because I know we all stand and sit here together and agree with the things which have been said before. So I'm not going to go over those things, but I just want you to know that I will be working side by side with the Cypriot community in Edmonton. Another thing about me is that I've worked as a practice manager, not far from here in Palmer's Green. So I've seen in the last five years, the devastation, the destruction that this coalition has put, a, put upon the NHS, especially GP surgeries. We all know in this room how hard it is to get an appointment. And I've seen firsthand how many families have had to basically phone me as the practice manager just to get an appointment, which is wrong. So I'm proud to know that the Labour, Labour Party has put a full out committal to ensure that this does not happen. So we have to make sure we get the vote out. Those of us in this room that can support any marginal seat nearby where they live, please, I, I, you know, I plead with you, make sure we go out and we do what we can do. Because we need to make sure we have a majority, a Labour majority. And that is what we're all here for. And I know that we all stand together on that. So I thank you again for inviting me here. And I want you to know that I come here as a child of Haringey, so I'm a Cypriot, slightly. <laughs> but, you know, on a very serious level, we have to work together because we all want the same thing, and that's the Labour majority. So I thank you. I must say I'm an interloper in this evening's proceedings, and the last thing I thought, knowing how uh, bound by convention this meeting would be, to find myself up here speaking to you, but I think it's got more to do with the fact that Andrew Dismore is heading this way, but he may be a little late. <laughs> and I'm one of, I suspect, of several fillers uh, that will uh, keep you occupied uh, until he arrives. I want to say just a few things. As a keen observer of this particular election, I have to start by an admission. I haven't finally got through Labour's manifesto. <laughs> but I am on the way. In fact, I've, I, I would say I've done a good two thirds of it and I will get to the end. So I, I'm not as uh, well prepared with the actual policies that the Labour Party is pursuing in its manifesto. But I just want to say a couple of things to you about what this election is all about. The first thing to say is uh, the Institute for Fiscal Studies has produced a number of reports, the latest one uh, yesterday, which highlight the fact that according to the information that they've received from the Conservative Party, the austerity programme that they will institute in the first two years of the next government will be so severe, much more severe than that that they have done over the last five years, which, my God, has been severe enough, that the whole future of our public services is at stake in this election. The second thing that's at stake is the living standards of ordinary people. As has already been indicated, People are anywhere between 1,300 and 1,600 pounds worse off after five years of this coalition. And yet, even through all of that, the Conservatives insist on making the least well-off pay the price of the austerity programme that they're putting forward. So no one on moderate or low incomes can look forward to a government run by the Conservatives that can offer them a solution to this critical problem that they face and being able to make ends meet on a weekly basis. 
And that, of course, feeds into the whole issue of inequality. Not an issue that affects only the United Kingdom. It is a worldwide phenomenon, the increase in inequality. But this government, whilst recognising that, is intent on making that inequality even worse than it currently is. And I think that that, above all else, should condemn them in the minds of all right-thinking people. Because uh, what I would admit that others, as well as the Labour Party, are putting forward in this election is the idea that we should be fair and the way that the burden is shared uh, to deliver uh, a reduction in the uh, uh, money that we have to pay back. Ολόκληρε ομιλίε από την προεκλογική συγκέντρωση θα παρακολουθήσετε αύριο Σάββατο στην εκπομπή με το φακό του Χελένικ TV στι 8 και 4.